The way we build software is about to change big time. So Trey just went ahead and launched their 2.0 update and this isn't a simple upgrade, it's a complete overhaul. And it's gone from being a simple AI coding assistant to a full blown AI coding agent and the difference is huge. And the biggest highlight you ask, well, solo mode, the world's first context engineer. Solo isn't just helping you write code. It understands your entire project context, collaborates with you and handles everything from writing the PRD to coding, debugging and even deploying a complete application. It has got a built-in browser, terminal and tools panel and with the solo builder agent inside, all the heavy lifting is already taken care of like the front end, the back end and even deployment. So you get a live shareable link without you needing to jump between tools or environments. But here's the key, solo work with you. It doesn't take over your entire workflow. It is like having a smart teammate that can operate independently when needed. And now while compared with other AI coding tools like Cursor, Windsor, or Lovable, Solo really stands out. So while those tools focus mostly on code generation, Solo understands the context, manage the full development pipeline and deliver complete running application and it's not just about code suggestions anymore. You get a fully functional backend, frontend and even a live deployed URL, no need of jumping between tools or no extra setup needed. And if you prefer staying hands on, you can still use Tray in IDE mode as well where it helps you with things like intelligent auto completion, debugging, batch refactoring and even voice input. Yes, now you can talk to Tray AI and it will do things for you. And the Pricing, it is super affordable at just $3 for the first month and then $10 per month for 600 fast requests. And that includes support for Cloud4 Sonnet, GPT-40 and even the latest Grok4. And yes, you heard that correct. You get access to 600 fast requests to all these top models for just $10 a month. And now let me quickly jump onto my computer screen and show you Tray 2.0 and solo mode in action. So this right here is the official website of Tray AI. And to get the newest update that is Tray 2.0 with solo mode, the first thing that you gotta do is to click the first link in the description below and head over to their official website. And now as you could probably already tell, their homepage has got a major update and everything is now updated to reflect the latest 2.0 update. And now if you want to read through the content, you can head over to and find more details like the solo mode, what it can do and pretty much everything else. And now to quickly get started, the first thing that you gotta do is to head over to tray.ai, sign up for a new account and you can click this button called as download tray and you can download the same to your computer like the installer and just go ahead and install and open the same. So here I have went ahead and installed and opened up tray and this is going to be the kind of interface that you will see. And now if you have used tray in the past, you could probably already tell the UI and pretty much everything has got a major, you know, overhaul. So as mentioned earlier, there are two types of mode within Tray. The first one is IDE mode and then the solo mode. So when you open it up in solo mode, this is going to be the kind of interface. And now if you want to use it in IDE mode, well, you can actually do that by clicking on this button right here towards the top left. And now it switches back to the IDE mode. But in this video, I'm specifically interested in the solo mode. So I'll click on this button right here. And this right here is solo mode. And this is where all the magic happens. So as you can see, it says collaborate with solo builder. And solo builder is the first AI context engineer that pretty much can do anything. So it can create the application, it can debug it, it can test it, and it can even deploy the same all within this interface right here. And now in this video, for just as to demonstrate how this whole thing work, I'll create a simple web app and along the way, I'll also show all the different features like the flow mode and you know, editor interface, terminal, browser, doc view, and even deployment. So I'll explain all about that. So first thing first, right now we are in the solo mode and towards the left side, you can find a input box and here all you gotta do is to explain exactly what you want to build. And the interesting thing is that you now have an option called as this one right here, that is voice input. So you no longer have to type anything or use any external application. So if you want to, let's say communicate or let's say tell something to the AI, you simply enable this option and now whatever stuff that you speak right now, everything will be automatically filled in for you just like this. And now if you click on this button right here, you can upload images and solo builder by default uses cloud force on it. And the same is selected in here. Now, for example, let's say I want to build a react based website that allows people to upload an image and change the format, like convert the format. For example, let's say I have a JPG file and now I want to convert it to let's say WebP or JPG or let's say PNG or any other format. So basically I need to create, let's say an image converter website. And for that, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and enable this voice input option. I want to create a react based web app that allows people to upload an image and convert the format. So it should give the users the option to upload an image in a format and convert and download the same in other formats like WebP, PNG, JPG, GIF, etc. I want the website to have a really good looking landing page. 
in the root and also the main app in the slash app directory or let's say root. So there you go. This right here is the initial prompt I'll give. So basically I went ahead and explained what are the features and what kind of website or let's say app I want to develop. And I actually used the built-in voice mode here. So you don't have to use any other software like let's say Whisperflow or Aqua Voice. You can use the built-in voice input option. And now, now that we have filled in the basic prompt, I'll go ahead and click on the send button right here. And now it says please open a folder to save files in this project and now i'll click on this open folder option and maybe i can create a new folder and i'll name it image and i'll create the same okay there you go i'll click on open and now the ai gets to work i'll click on yes trust the others and now the first thing that solo builder does is that it goes ahead and creates a prd and actually open that up in the doc view section right here so let's wait for it and now it says I need to create a react based project. All right. So that looks good. So it is starting by creating the PRD file. And now if you move over to this doc view section right here, you can find the PRD, which contains all the information about the app that it is about to develop. It will contain all the diagrams and pretty much everything will be in there. So let me wait for it to complete first. As you can see here, we have the tables, all the different sections, right? product overview, core features. Then we have page details. And then we have the mermaid diagram of the core process. Then we have user interface design. You have all these tables. So even before starting the project, it will create an extensive product requirements document or PRD, and you can read through it and find, you know, what other features that the AI has planned to implement. And if you want to make any changes or add additional things, you can go ahead and ask solo. And now it says, I have successfully created a comprehensive PRD. It includes beautiful landing page, main converter, support for multiple image formats, drag and drop interface. All right, so pretty much everything looks good. So whenever you give a prompt to solo builder, the first thing that it does is that it goes ahead and creates a PRD. And if you, I mean, right now we have flow mode enabled, so it will automatically switch to the doc view. So even without me having to do anything, solo builder itself will automatically move between the editor interface, terminal tab, browser, and even doc view. So initially when we give a prompt, it starts by sort of creating a PRD and it has, it is displaying the same right now. And I went through it and pretty much everything looks good. And now what I'll do is I'll click on this option called as ready to build. And now this is where the air truly gets to work or let's say solo builder truly gets to work. And now it says perfect. I need to set up a react project structure. Since this is an empty project, it will go ahead and initialize a project environment first. Okay. Let's wait for it. So as you can see, I did not do anything tray or let's say solo builder itself has went ahead and opened up terminal and ran the command to set up a new V react project. And now it is running the PNPM install command. It's all hands free, right? I'm not doing anything. So that is the power of solo builder. So you basically go ahead and give your initial prompt and exactly what you want to do. And now solo builder gets to work and it itself will do everything for you. And it will intelligently move between all these tabs as well. So right now it is installing all these dependencies. And right now we are in the terminal instance. So let's see. So it seems like that's done. And now it says I'll implement the complete image converter application based on the product requirements document. Okay. So as the base, it is actually using this document that we saw just now. All right. So it has opened up a different terminal instance and it is now running a PNPM add browser image compression uh, command. So let's wait. Okay. All right. So there you go. So solo builder has actually went ahead and moved to the editor interface right now. So it has actually went ahead and installed all the required dependencies. And now it's time for it to write all this code. And now as soon as it's time for it to write code, it actually went ahead and jumped to the editor interface or editor tab. And now you can find all the code that the AI is writing. So right now it is creating the converter.tsx file. So there you go. You can find all these details in here. So the interesting thing is that you don't really have to do anything. So you went ahead and gave an initial prompt and the AI created the PRD and now it's doing everything all by itself. So it will take care of creating the files, deleting the file, making changes, running it, testing it out and even deploying the same. In which case it will take some time for the AI to create all the files. All right. So seems like it's done and it has now jumped to the terminal instance and it has actually started the uh, local development server. And hopefully it will now automatically switch to the browser interface and show us the preview of the app. There you go. It has actually switched to the browser interface. And now this is yet another cool thing. So as you're developing an app, you no longer need to sort of open a web browser and preview the app. Everything happens right within this interface right here. So here we have a dedicated browser section where you can actually view the preview of the app. And now it seems like it's making sure the code compiles without any TypeScript errors. So it is making some checks. So let's wait for it. There you go. So everything is pretty much completed is what it says. 
and now here we have a fully functional image converter website and now it also shows us the option to deploy the same but before that let me actually go ahead and try to use it so here we have a nice landing page basic one and it says convert images instantly and free and you have a couple of these cards and also this footer section and if i click on the start converting option it takes us to a page where it says upload your image and it says drag and drop your image in here all right so here i have a png image and i'll drag and drop the same in here and now we get a toast message saying image uploaded successfully that's good and now we can find a preview of the image in here and it also gives us the option to select the image format the output format so this right here is a png file and the file size is like 1.32 megabytes and now let's say i want to convert it to jpg or let's say webp and now i'll click on convert image and there you go it says converted successfully and size reduction 12 percent new size so there you go it is giving me the option to download the same and i can click on save and now let me see so here in the downloads folder i can find the newly downloaded image so there you go so this right here is the webp image okay so as you can see generated images dot webp so the basic functionality of being able to convert the image is indeed working and just like that we actually have a working version of the app ready right and now let's say you want to make some changes to this page right here the interesting part is that you have an option called as select so while you're in the browser window so let's say i want to change the color of this button right here so i can click on this option called as select and now as i highlight over all these elements you can find a small selection so in this case i'll select this button right here and now a pop-up appears saying add to chat so i'll click on the same and i'll go ahead and say change the color of the button to red okay and now i'll click on send and watch this all right so it has automatically jumped to the editor interface and now it has made the change and it has switched back to the browser interface and there you go here we have the button in the red color okay so that is how it is and now if you want to make let's say any changes or add new pages or i mean we already have a about page so let me try to visit that so this writer is the about page about our image converter how to use the same supported image formats technical information all of that is in here and now the interesting part is that we went ahead and gave a prompt the AI itself did everything and here we have a working version ready right and now here is one of my personal favorite feature and that is the ability to deploy your project right within tray so right now we are in the solo builder interface right here and now here you can find a pop-up telling deploy and share your project and you can also find a deploy button towards the top right and now if i click on this button called as deploy it will open a pop-up called as connect service and it says Tray supports deploying your app to Vercel and first time users need to authorize the service so i'll click on start authorization button right here and now it opens up a page something like this asking us to authenticate tray with Vercel. and now i'll click on go to authorize select the account and let's say install let's wait so there you go it's done and i'll click on open tray and now i can click on this deploy button again and this time it will go ahead and deploy the project on Vercel and give me an address that I can then share with anyone. So basically I just went ahead and built a project and now I'm deploying the same to Vercel so that I can so that anyone can access the same. So there you go. Here we have the deployed address. So I'll go ahead and let's say uh, copy the link, open it up in a new tab, hit enter and let's see. OK, the deployment build is in progress. So let's wait for a couple of seconds. So there you go, deployment is ready and there we have it. The project that we created just now is completely live on the internet and anyone can use it. I just went ahead and give one simple prompt and now here we are. So here we have the option to let's say add image. Let me see, the P format. I can select the option, convert the image, download the same. Pretty much all the feature is working and just like that we have deployed our app. And now if you make any changes to your let's say project you can go ahead and make any changes and redeploy it and tray or let's say solo builder itself will do it for you another thing is that even if you're using solo mode and let's say you want to switch back to the ide mode well you can do that right now we are in the solo mode and now if i click on this button right here it will switch back to the ide mode where i can find the complete files in my project and i can view the same and i can make changes to it and you get that a interface towards the right side so like using it in the regular mode so if you want to let's say make any changes you can put the message in here and you also get the option to switch the ai model that you want to use so if you are in the ide mode you can actually go ahead and select all these models like cloud 4 sonnet we have gemini 2.5 pro gpt 4.0 grok 4 
deep seek we have all that models in here right and now i'll switch back to solo mode and now if i click on the settings icon right here it opens up the ai management page and here you can uh, configure all these agents related settings and now tray allows you to add mcp servers so if you want to let's say add a particular mcp server to tray you can actually click on this button right here and configure mcp and then you have this context option then we have rules so if you want the solo builder to behave in a certain way or operate in a certain way you can go ahead and specify all that rules in this user rules.md or project rules.md file and if i move over to the model section right here i can find all the models and even add models as well okay i can select the provider i can select the model and i can configure like add a custom api key and then i can use it that way as well so these are all the basic features of solo builder and now if you click on this at the right symbol right here you can select the agent and the built-in agents are builder builder with mcp and solo builder and you even have the option to create agents as well and now if you click on this hash button right here you'll be able to add documentation files folders or even add web links for the extra context to the a so you have options for that too and now this is all the major features that are available within Tray AI and my personal favorite feature has to be the solo mode. And next up, let's say I want to make any changes to the app. And now next up, let's say I want to create a new page in my project that allows people to sort of crop an image. So I'll go ahead and say, I want to create a new page in our project that allows people to upload an image and crop the image. I'll click on the send button. So let's wait for it. And now solo builder will go ahead and analyze our request go through exactly what it has to do make all the changes run the terminal commands if needed create all the files and once done it will show us the updated version of our app in the browser tab so let's wait for it as you can see it is now adding a package so it has automatically switched to the terminal mode and now it is creating all these files all right so the a is done right in the code and it has switched to the browser interface and now i'm in the crop page and it says upload an image and crop it to your desired size and aspect ratio so i'll click on this option choose images and now let's say i'll select one of these images okay there you go i have the option to select the selection like how much part i want to crop let's say i want to crop it like this in this aspect ratio and now okay what i'll do is I'll click on this option called as generate crop there you go we have an option called as download cropped image and as soon as i click it it gives me the option to download the same okay let me see in my downloads folder i have the cropped image and there you go so this right here is the downloaded cropped image and now in a similar fashion whatever be that features that you want to add to your project you just go ahead and tell that to the solo builder and now solo builder will take care of adding and you know doing everything for you and yeah, that's pretty much all the basic and important features within Tray AI, like the new 2.0 update. And if you want to, let's say, check your website for responsiveness, you can click on this option right here and you can actually select the device. For example, let's say iPhone 14, Pixel 7, you know, yeah. And now I'll put it in the responsive mode. Maybe I can disable this option. And now if you want to open it up in a real web browser, like let's say Google Chrome, for example, you can click on this button right here and now it will open the app in here okay so everything pretty much works and if you too want to try out the new solo builder the context engineer in tray ai 2.0 the first thing that you gotta do is to click the first link in the description below and head over to the official website of tray ai sign up for a new account and you can download the installer install it on your computer and start using it right away and now that's pretty much all i wanted to show you in this video i hope you guys found this video useful if yes make sure to subscribe and i'll see you in the next one